Okay, so let, let's go ahead and start it. I think I just live stream our class. Um, so this is week 10 of medical speaking at Da Nang. And the, the first one, we're going to present the case. So while we, did, we try to set up a case, uh, let me remind you that um, this is our week 10. So once you hit share screen, Dr. Twin Wing, that's a, a option. You can pick any window that you would like to share. Okay. And by the way, let, let me estimate oh. how many of you guys show up today. Uh, what is it, the class side today? Um, we will um, um, to do again the uh, presentation, the case, uh, like last week. Okay. Well, I'm just curious, how many of you show up today? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mã này, cái kia thứ mấy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Quảng hết và nó sẽ đúng rồi. Uh, Queen or Brian or Dr. Ho An Fu, um, you want to talk just raise your hand and unmute. I think you can do it by yourself. I don't, I don't know if you need that. Yes, An Fu, go ahead. We can hear you. Sorry, sorry. Go thử cái cái phone mới, phone. Okay. Không work. Um. Okay. Um. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, um, uh, Harrison. Uh, what is the other the new doctor? Okay, name? so let me introduce again. Um, how this is um. um yeah. So why they pick out that? Let me do a quick intro again. Uh, and for Ho, uh, Harrison is uh, our newest um instructor in this class. He was an MD before from Vietnam, graduate from medical school in Vietnam, went to the U.S., learned to become an RN, didn't like it, went to medical school here. Finished medical school now in a second year of residency in internal medicine. Uh, Dr. Ho, Wang Fu Ho, is a, a gynecologist um, in Australia. He's, he's, he's in a sub specialized further in, in infertility, uh, so that's his specialties. Nice to meet you, Dr. Ho. Okay, guys. Uh, da Nang, are you ready? Uh, slide on the web. It's okay. I know you guys are busy with the um, APEC and then President films, but that's okay. Um, oh, then there we go. It's working. Good. Good. Đây nè, cái cái này nhưng mà là không thấy cách nào mà xe cái màn hình nó lên à. À, à maybe I I It's not already uh, We see you. Cái cái đó đang bảo Aro của lên Ở đâu rồi chị? Đâu rồi? Đâu rồi? Đâu rồi? Đâu rồi? Đây hả? So how can I say it on the the web đi nè. Chị vô cái web Vietnam đi chứ. Đây nó xe nè, nhưng mà làm sao mà mở nó lên? Đây rồi đúng không? Um, good. Yeah, yes, we 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 can see your uh, presentation. That's good, okay? Okay, who wants to go first? And Platz, can you keep your noise at the minimum level a little bit? Okay. Thank you. And then speak louder. Mike, keep your class quiet and then speak loud. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. Today, we will uh, uh, present uh, a case. Uh, this is a six-month-old girl. Uh, uh, with the uh, Down syndrome, 
uh, she was transferred to hospital because, because of three days unwell. Um, okay. Around the stories of the present unit, she had uh, three days unwell and pain looking. Uh, uh, felt so fry, breathing a lot, and she uh, felt tiredness uh, while breastfeeding. Uh, and uh, uh, and no other symptom uh, such as uh, no fever, no cough. Um, about past medical history, um, she has a uh, Down syndrome. Uh, she was born normal birth and mater. Uh, she uh, poor away again. Uh, 2.7 kilogram at birth, and now she uh, his and now her weight is uh, 4.1 kilogram. She at uh, she had uh, been uh, admitted in the hospital three times uh, with uh, pneumonia before. Uh, she uh, was diagnosed uh, VSD at birth and uh, moderate pulmonary hypertension, moderate congestive plus paleo at uh, three months old, and she was treated uh, with the thoracemic one milligram um, per kilogram uh, PO can uh, tell out, and uh, degoxin a mm, microgram per kilogram uh, PO can day. Uh, she, she no uh, mm, allergy to drug or food, um, in that um, family history, she uh, was a second child on family, uh, and uh, in her, her family, no one has heart disease or inherited a disorder. Uh, around physical exam, the softness of breath and uh, fast breathing uh, with the uh, city fry. RBM and the fast heart rate, uh, 135 RBM. Uh, we have a pen systolic murmur uh, with gray for sick and a best heart in the lab uh, for intercostal space. Uh, and she also had minor uh, and last liver and uh, now. Is um, uh, She had um, um, chest x ray, so uh, cardiomegaly with the uh, plethoric lung field and echocardiography, so uh, last uh, perimembranous VSD uh, with the uh, inlet extension having left to right sun, uh, low velocity. Velocity, velocity flow as well as the defect uh, and biventricular dilatation under interventricular septal motion. And, diagnose, and uh, she was diagnosed uh, Down syndrome with uh, uh, VSD. About treatment, uh, the VSD were closed with the PTFE. Bed. Um, she remained in the ventilator for five days and was uh, discharged uh, without any complication after ambulating with the proper antibiotic, uh, postural drainage, and uh, physiotherapy. Both um, operated echocardiography, so no residual VSD, uh, good lab uh, ventricular function. Uh, and chat is right so clear learn field. Um, and uh, uh, um, uh, we want to um, introduce about some uh, complication of uh, surgery of uh, VSD surgery. Uh, potential complication of the cervical ventricular septal defects uh, in a, a closure include uh, one infection, 
uh, to uh, post uh, operative bleeding required re exploration, advanced uh, injuring, uh, pulmonary hypertension with the poor cardio output, uh, AV heart block, uh, and uh, residual VSD with continual left to right sun and death. Uh, and um, uh, this is a case uh, BSD with uh, Down syndrome uh, and um, complication of surgery has uh, more, more complication than BSD uh, uh, with uh, without um, Down syndrome about uh, um, risk of uh, long intubation, um, about, uh, about, <coughs> prolonged, uh, about length of stay uh, in hospital, uh, about uh, um, both operative infection uh, and uh, respiratory complication pulmonary hypertension uh, but but um, but uh, Down syndrome patient undergoing VSD closure also had a higher rate of heart block required pacemaker placement uh, but uh, it's, it's not uh, confer a significant mortality risk for the most common operation performed in this uh, population. However, both uh, operative uh, morbi morbidity remains common. And uh, about follow-up for uh, both operative, uh, we need to uh, not notice uh, about um, office, office examination uh, schedule every one to two years, uh, and activity should not be restricted, restricted, restricted uh, unless complication have resulted from surgery. Mm. And uh, the ECRI will so um, in RB will be in uh, fifty percent to uh, ninety percent of patient who had a uh, VSD repair uh, through right ventricular tummy and uh, up to uh, 40% of the patient who had a uh, repair through a dry atrial approach. Mm. And uh, a patient with a uh, uh, bowel operating history of uh, transient heart block with uh, without basic medical therapy requires long term follow up. Uh, and uh, uh, we want to discuss about two questions. Uh, the first, uh, which age is best for VSD surgery? Uh, and uh, the second, is, uh, what prognosis uh, distinguish between VSD with uh, Down syndrome and uh, VSD without Down syndrome? Uh, thank you for your listen. Go ahead, Queen. Go ahead, Queen. So, very, very thorough uh, presentation on a complicated topic. Uh, before I answer your question, I just want to go over some of the stuff. Uh, I think it's a, overall is a very good presentation. Um, on the physical exam, I think you did a good job describing the uh, the, the systolic murmur, the hep hepatomegaly. But I would also add, like with these VSD, you also want to put your hand on the chest and feel if there's any thrill. This, you're definitely going to feel a thrill. That's a good sign because if you have, still have a thrill, that means your left side pressure is still much higher than the right side pressure. If you have late stage VSD, when you start to have severe pulmonary hypertension, the pressure on the left side and the right side will equalize and you might not even hear the murmur anymore. So the loud murmur in these, in these patients is actually a good sign uh, 
Um, the only thing I will add to the physical exam is you also need to, you, you describe hepatomegaly, but maybe describe the JVD also to, to, to better characterize, um, you know, how much volume overload the patient have. Um, the part of the workup, um, I know for this patient is clearly that she has symptomatic from her VSD, but um, at least in, I don't see a lot of uh, pediatrics cardiology patient, but for adult, we usually do a right heart cath. First of all, to see the amount of shunt from, from left to right. So what we do is we check the saturation of the, uh, <clears throat> on the right side of the heart. So we put in the RA, RV, PA, look for so the saturation and they, they higher the step up in the saturation. For example, and your IVC saturation is 65%, but when you go to your RV, it's like 90%. That means you have a lot of shunting. So that is also, in the past, it's been one of the, at least for adult, is a criteria for us to, um, to determine who should get surgery. Because if your shunting is, if you're, we call it the, the Q, QP over QS, that means the amount of blood flow in the pulmonary vasculature compared to the amount of blood flow in the systemic vasculature. In the past, they said it was usually more than 1.5 ratio, then you should have the surgery, at least for adults. Um, but now uh, with the new, new, new study, uh, anything, anytime you, you have like evidence of right side enlargement or something, then you, you do the, then you do the surgery. Um, the, and you always want to make sure <coughs> that um, um, when you do the, the, the citation, I think that's a really good, uh, good, good thing for the citation, for the reference, but you make sure you, 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 you give us the reference of what study it come from. So we can know if we want to read about it, we can go track it down, but it's a good reference. Um, the, best for v, the best age for VSD is if they're, symptomat any, uh, if they're symptomatic, any sign of right heart failure, significant amount of shun, then you you should do the surgery. I don't have the the data on the best the best age of, of the surgery. Uh, and the second question you ask is why is VSD surgery um, high has higher rate of complication in Down syndrome? Uh, Down syndrome. I don't know if it's related to the the risk of infection or something from uh, the immune system down regulation, but definitely for Down syndrome patient have much more higher risk of congenital. Uh, cardiac defect, like, you know, uh, coarctation or other comorbidity. Maybe that's the reason their surgeries, it tend to be a little bit higher risk because it's not just a straightforward uh, VSD uh, surgery. Um, but I don't have the, the actual data on why is it higher. I don't know. Maybe it's related to immunology or related to the complexity of the, of the surgery because it's usually not just isolated uh, VSD in, in, in Down syndrome. They might have other disease. Okay. You guys have any other questions? Yeah, um, I have um, uh, something to um, contribute to the uh, lecture. Um, we, are, we are very fortunate to have a um, cardiology chief fellow here, Dr. Quindo. So I think that would be a, a very um, blessed side for the class today. We can all learn from him an expert. Um, I uh, happened to be um, a um, pediatrician in Vietnam before I um, went to medical, uh, I went to America. So um, yeah, um, I saw a lot of patients with uh, VSD and Down syndrome before. Um, so, um, oh, first of all, I would like to discuss about the format of the presentation. I think, um, with your case presentation, you should uh, break it into two parts. First, talking about a case uh, from the chip complaint, action P, uh, PE, like physical exam, diagnose, treatment, and mutual prognosis. Um, and then you can, the second part, you can talk about it, uh, the, the uh, problem like um, Down syndrome and v VSD in general. So it, it don't make the audience confused uh, what we're gonna do for patient that the general prognosis or like um, on this particular patient or we were talking about like generalized um, problems. So, um, 
and um, refer to the, uh, the the question um, that we uh, uh, discuss, like what age is the best for VSD surgery? Like Dr. Quindo said, you know, it's it's going to be depends on the symptomatic uh, patient or not. Um, like if patient um, symptomatic patient uh, start um, start to have um, like psychotic, then we should be more aggressive to go toward the um, surgery to correct the uh, the the the, um, uh, yes, the before it's turned into like excellent uh, syn syndrome or something if I remember it correctly. Um, and uh, the, um, the uh, pronosis between VSD and Down syndrome with VSD, as we all know, Down syndrome patients don't have, um, don't have a lifespan as long as the um, regular population. The, um, I think the, um, the mean lifespan is about 40 years old. Um, and um, that, um, and the other problem already mentioned by Dr. Quindo. And um, another uh, thing on this patient, um, when, when you intubate a patient um, with, um, with Down syndrome, you really, really um, very careful because patients with Down syndrome have a, um, problem with um, they call C one and C two of spinal um, uh, of spi of spinal um, uh, vertebra that very they call um, they call luxurated or something like very uh, fragile fragile on that area. So when you extend the neck too far now, you can uh, call um, um, spinal for um, injury on uh, Down syndrome patient. So very careful when you intubate a patient. Um, and um, on physical exam, you should you should mention patient is cyanotic or not. First, secondary, when patient, um, the um, pediatric, uh, pediatric patient, they have difficulty of um, breathing. You should mention about like whether patient using their accessory muscle um, or um, yeah, cyanotic, like what I, uh, that I have. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Dr. Hall? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I just take it out. Is it, um, Sorry, um, I, I set up the question. Uh, it's a bit complicated, um, but I, I want to raise the issue that I think in Danan that you've got hospital where joys between obstetric and you know pediatrics. So you probably get some idea before the patient, you know, the, the baby been delivered and how to manage, you know, subsequently either in neonatal time or just later on six months, you know, usually they, they depend on what condition they might operate at about six months of you know, birth. I'm going to the presentation. Presentation very comprehensive and long, and you need to pronunciation still you're having you're still having some problem with pronunciation, especially the long wording, like diagnosis, furosemide, um, digoxins. Uh, use something it's just like if you don't you if you don't you find it hard to speak and you have to speak slowly in like digoxin or digoxin whatever you pronounce it. so uh, what we do down syndrome is uh, you know this is very complicated and you and very if you need the or you know the audience to to listen or to pay attention you need to be, be a bit more you know in a way, a bit more active and how you cut short. Sometimes your presentation a bit too long wording and sometimes it get make people more feel, you know, they have to read on the presentation, then they don't they don't they don't follow you. 
But in general, it's good, it's comprehensive, it's still, you know, mismatch to a point that Dr. Quinn Doe or Dr. Harrison has spoken. But it's a good topic and get to know. And what I like to, this is a right issue, you know, you need to know. If you I know you are all pediatrician, but, you know, something you need to know a bit before the, you know, the baby deliver. So you can get more, you know, more view and how you manage. And, and I think later on, you probably have to build a bridge between obstetric and, and, and pediatric. But usually what we do here, if we found the baby have Down syndrome and what we do, we get all the team involved way before the baby born. So we can plan everything beforehand, counseling the parents, counseling all the family and give them all the option of what happened to the baby we got a pediatrician cardiologist involved and they do echocardiogram way before baby born. And we assess how the baby heart condition, anything else. And, um, but the other thing I just might be slight dis disagree with Harrison that these days that with the you know, advanced technology here, a lot of baby Down syndrome, depend on how severe it is. Most baby can live very long and can have a normal life. It's, we, we, we intervene very quickly, very early, especially congenital cardiac disease. We interfere with them. Mentally, we don't, but other one we can, we can manage quite well. And we hold social support, and the baby can live a normal life with the parents. Um, and majority of live very long and get uh, in a normal life. OK, thank you. I'm sorry. I got a call from hospital. Um, um, when I, I leave, give it back to you. I got a baby, baby. Okay, so uh, Dr. Fu um, had some, uh, he had a new baby. I'm not sure, is it his baby or someone else's baby? <laughs> um, um, okay, so let me, um, Dr. Fu. Uh, hello, Carl. I'm sorry, I got to go for catch a baby. Um, okay. I tried to be back on time. That's okay. Have a good we fun. Must, I'm sorry, go. sorry, Queen. Got to go. Okay. Got to make money. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, no, bye. you know, this is your baby, so, so you, you have to go and catch up, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, see you, uh, Dr. Ho. Okay. Uh, maybe can I just add, like, one minor point? Um, when you present the, the weight of the baby from 2.7 to 4.1, maybe it would help us to, uh, to, to, to say what is that as a percentile of, of someone that at that age group? It will give us a better idea, okay, is it really bad or is it just a little bit bad? Um, and then uh, one last trick for you guys who are interested in cardiology is that you can estimate the PA pressure if you know this, the, if you check the blood pressure and you check the gradient on the echo and you subtract that gradient, that will give you the PA pressure, even without doing a cardiac cath. Good. All right. Why don't we move on to the next case? Okay. All right, who is the next one? <laughs> so, Brian, this is actually this is the uh, main format of uh, teaching in this class. So I have to get familiar with uh, is the goal is uh, for the next couple of times, what we do is we will assign instructor one per section. As you see, we don't have to be all to be here. I think you can be here one week and me, uh, Dr. Queen Dao, Dr. Wang Fu. Uh, so by that time, everyone can have a more um, time. But also, we like to make sure the class is more efficient. Does it make sense? So that's yeah. the goal. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Dana. So you have to yourself and uh, hi, hi everyone. Uh, today I um, want to. Uh, um, Excuse me, I like to. <laughs> uh, sorry, um, today I like to uh, um, talk about the uh, surgeries of uh, technologies of follows. Um, yeah. Okay, Dr. Quindo, this is your expertise, so feel free to give as much as feedback as you want, okay? Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, my case is a six months old baby uh, was diagnosed with uh, tetralogies of follows 
and I will uh, um, um, explain with the, uh, the parents the tie up surgery, uh, the successful raise the rig of my surgeries and uh, the plan of uh, blow up. Okay, go ahead. Do you have a, a presentation that you'd like to share with us? Oh, um, um, no, I have no presentation. Okay, that's fine. Just like uh, President Trump, he had no presentation. Go ahead, keep talking. Uh, yes, um, uh, at first I, I want to uh, uh, explain tie up surgery. Okay. Yes. Uh, doctor repair tetralogies of follow through and open heart surgery soon after birth or later in infancies, uh, depending on the baby health or and weight and severity of uh, defects and symptom. The two surgery options are uh, temporary surgeries. This usually uh, done. Uh, only when a baby is too weak or small to have a full surgery. In this procedure, uh, the surgeon creates a sun between a large artery that spreads up from the aorta to uh, the pulmonary arteries when your baby is. Uh, uh, and uh, this operation will increase blood flow uh, to the lungs. Uh, this then will be uh, removed when your baby is uh, ready for a complete repair. And uh, the second option, um, complete repair. This open heart surgery is usually done during the first years uh, after birth. The surgeon placed a patch in uh, to close the hole between the lower chambers of the heart. She also repaired the narrow uh, pulmonary bones and widened the pulmonary artery to increase blood flow to the lungs. And uh, the successful rate is uh, very high. With um, a primary repair, the mortality rate is uh, under 2%. And, uh, the mortality rate uh, in complete repair is one to five percent. This means uh, the baby will uh, survive um, uh, with percentage uh, over ninety five percent. And uh, um, the the risk of surgeries. Um, uh, First, I, I want to talk and I like to talk about the risk of uh, uh, temporary repair. Uh, the sun uh, elicits a few complications, <laughs> include undeveloping of the arm, death of the fingers, injury the diaphragm nerve, and uh, narrowing the pulmonary artery. Uh, and uh, why more baby do well after complete repair? Long-term complications uh, include irregular heart beat, uh, heart run problem, uh, and uh, house in the world, world between the lower chambers may continue to less after repair. Mm. Uh, chronic pulmonary regurgitations, in which uh, the blood flow through the pulmonary veins uh, back into the uh, house pumping chamber, Con um, coronary artery disease, sudden uh, cardiac death. In addition, as with any surgery, uh, <coughs> there are risks of infections, unexpected bleeding, or uh, blood clots. And uh, finally, I'd uh, like to uh, talk about the plan of follow-up. Uh, after surgery, your baby needs lifelong care with cardiologists, include routine follow-up to make sure that uh, the surgery was successful and uh, 
monitor for any new complications. Uh, your child needs a physical examination and uh, all the tests to, mon to monitor your child's condition. Um, your child may uh, limit, limit physical activity. Sometimes, if your child has dental procedure, antibiotics uh, may be used to prevent infections and uh, my call, um, that's my call endocarditis and inflammation of the lining of the heart. Uh, and I have finished my presentation. Thank you for listening. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, go ahead, Aubin. Okay, it's very uh, very thorough presentation. Again, it seemed like you guys did a lot of research uh, on this uh, topic. Just want to, to throw it out there that over here, the congenital heart disease is um, is its own specialty. You know, we do cardiology, and if you want to study congenital heart disease, it's another one year by itself. So m most of the patients I've seen are after repair already. I've seen mostly adult, but... Uh, so just, uh, just to refresh some of the, the problem with the tetralogy of fellows, uh, they have overriding aorta, VSE, pulmonary stenosis, and uh, just you have, you have the issue that you cannot get blood from the right side to the, to the left. So some of, the, um, some of these uh, uh, temporary surgery that you mentioned, including what they do is they divert the blood from the systemic circulation to the lung through you know, uh, certain procedure like a gland procedure or toxic bailock, so where they connect the subclavian artery to the pulmonary artery or the aorta connected to the uh, to the pulmonary vascular just to, to bring blood to your lung, just to increase that blood. But that's a temporary measure. The, the real measure surgery is you come up there, you widen up the uh, the outflow track of the uh, of the, the right ventricle, and you close the uh, the, the the VSD. Um, some of the complication that I've seen is that exactly like you mentioned, uh, arrhythmia, very common atrial arrhythmia in these patients. Um, and the most common uh, valve disease these patients will get down the line will be pulmonic regurgitation. Uh, because when you widen in that, 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 that outflow tract, but your valve was natively small. So over time, it can cause regurgitation. That's the most common thing that we see. The other the thing that is that is worrisome is for these patients is uh, is ventricular arrhythmia. So because of the scar from the surgery uh, and there's a big surgery, over time they can have uh, they can die suddenly because of uh, ventricular arrhythmia. And in some of the study, the the predictor for ventricular arrhythmia in these patients are if you have a QRS that is greater than 170 milliseconds on the EKG, those are in the in in the in the large study is to show to be the highest risk for for sudden death in these patients. Just uh, is nothing specific about the widening of QRS. It's just a reflective of the uh, right ventricular disease. Um, but this this is the most common uh, complex uh, congenital heart disease that we see um, as adult. And um, and I think you did a good job with the with. With all those numbers, I didn't know it out of the top of my head. I, I did learn a lot. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Harrison or Brian? No, no. Um, that's very uh, good. I'm learning from Dr. Pringle as well. <laughs> All right. So just my comment. Uh, you should spell tetralogy. Okay, I, I try to make sure you guys spell correctly because in one way that um, don't, this is your weak ten. Try not to uh, do monotone English. Monotone means tetralogy of this. You say tetralogy of follow. And that will, will make the, the names um, easy to recognize. But also when you present Try to give some time for the other thing. And then also you keep up. So those are the techniques that I like you to uh, think about and improve next time. Okay? Yeah. And uh, one last thing is whenever you present, um, I like to make sure that this is the very 
common Vietnamese way or mistake that I saw or observed to you guys over the year. Do not say so. Many of you start the conversation with so. Whenever you like to present something, especially at a professional conference, which I assume you are, you start a conversation with so, and people know that you are not truly professional. Second, if you don't know what to say, just keep silent and smile. Of course, make sure that you make your teeth look nice too. Okay. Lastly, but very important, when you present, you come with an agenda, which is most you guys do, what you like to present, and you ask for the feedback. Now, here, Dr. Quindo, he, he, I think he's one of the very extremely nice um, instructor. I don't think he failed any residents. Um, and I, I don't think Harrison is who get to that mean level yet. I'm quite mean, but if you know me well, I'm not as mean as Dr. Fu Ho. He's very mean, but I'm in between. I'd like to give you those feedback, and I hope that next time you think about it, because this is your hands. Questions? Questions? Um, I, have, I have no questions. Okay. We move to the next one. Thank you for your advice. Does it make sense? Yes. <laughs> By the way, class, how many of you still survive in week 10? <coughs> Remember, I told you about the Kaplan Meyer curve. So based on statistic number I have, you have about seven of you show up, right? Seven or eight today? Nine. 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 Nine, nine out of 17, that's almost 50%. So you guys, it's a, a, type of, a group of small cell carcinoma, okay? You are a type of lung cancer. So how will you die? Maybe by week 10. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. <coughs> Keep going. Let me introduce my case. Uh, a premature baby born at, <laughs> born at 30 with gestation and Mr. Juniki with respiratory distress uh, with required intubation and that's our um, possible hypoxic encephalopathy. And uh, so if I pay parent plan of management and um, possible outcomes. Very quick thing, encephalopathy. Encephalopathy. That's how you say it. Because if you say correctly. Uh, no, I will uh, discuss with the uh, patient, my parent, uh, about um, plan of management and uh, possible outcome. Yes. Yeah. Um, hello, uh, as you know, your paper, um, your paper, uh, your paper point, uh, um, a pre, uh, your paper is a premature paper, and um, after birth, he cannot cry, and uh, uh, we uh, we um, and he needs uh, uh, resuscitation and um, uh, require intubation. That means uh, we bust a tip to help her breath and has a mechanical ventilation to maintain his life. And so, um, uh, uh, under so, uh, uh, spot of has. So a uh, possible hypoxic encephalopathy. That means uh, brain dysfunction due to low oxygen level and uh, plus uh, and plus flow. Uh, so we will uh, just up support the uh, with respiratory 
cardiovascular uh, fluid restriction and uh, metabolism. So, um, and um, we will uh, use anti confusion and uh, therapeutic hypothermia. That, uh, that means a cooling therapy. Um, <coughs> total his body cooling. Uh, we will use early and uh, within six hour. This um, this measure can improve survival and neurodevelopment outcome in survival. Um, the uh, percentage of death uh, of your child is very high in some study. Um, uh, this percentage is about 80 uh, percent. And um, if uh, he can outcome here, the major complication is neurodisability. He can have problem with movement and uh, posture, learning this uh, difficult uh, difficulty and uh, hearing or vision impair. He can abnormal, abnormal of communication or uh, behavior or uh, memory. Uh, your, um, your child situation is very severe and uh, I uh, um, I uh, give us some uh, um, complication of your baby. Thank you for your listening. Okay, I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to just start first. Say, I, I, um, you present a very sick patient, but you, you tell the parent what was the reason why the patient, uh, I, I don't know if I missed it, or do you tell why the patient has to be on the ventilator and why they, uh, they, they, they had a, a hypoxemic, hypoxemic encephalopathy? Um, uh, I, uh, I give a... Uh, um, the baby and the child uh, cannot cry and cannot breath after birth, and uh, we need uh, intubation <coughs> to uh, uh, keep his life. Oh, so it's a it's a pre premature baby that yes. has, that have difficulty breathing. Okay. Yes. Um. I I don't know much about this, but I uh, know therapeutic. Hypothermia does help people with uh, like v VT, VFib arrest out of the hospital. It does improve their chance to, uh, to leave the hospital with neurologic deficit. But I don't know if the same um, mechanism would, uh, would work for, 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 for a premature baby. So I don't know how to comment on that. Maybe someone else can, can comment on that. We're missing uh, Dr. Huyn, Dr. Huyn went to uh... Yeah, um, me either. I don't have experience on um, hypothermia therapy, um, so I cannot comment on it. Um... How, how long do you keep these, these patients uh, on the hypothermia? Uh, within six hours. And then how long do you keep it going? Uh, how long? Uh, yes. Um, uh, it uh, leaks uh, at least at uh, uh, um, 24 hour. Mm. Do you give something to, to stimulate the lung to produ produce a surfactant? It's because uh, it's in surfactant, mm. right? No, no. Uh, we keep uh, the um, um, temperature, uh, temperature uh, uh, 33 from 33 to uh, 34 degree. 
Yeah, um, for uh, Dr. Quindo question, normally for Brimi baby, we normally uh, give them a steroid. To a steroid um, the, uh, production? No, when, uh, <coughs> we um, not, not usually you um, uh, we go east. We have a premature baby. So about the particular father, uh, mother, 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 father on, on the baby. And you said how? What is the percentage of people would improve? You said I, I didn't know. You said eighty percent would improve, or eighty percent would not improve. Do you, what are the chances that the patient will will improve? Do you said uh, it was? I heard you said eighty percent. Is it 80% will improve or will not improve? Uh, not improve. Will not can, improve. Oh. Can die. Wow. Can die. Can die. Wow. <coughs> Be, uh, because uh, because um, his situation uh, like, uh, classified um, third grade, uh, severe, severe hypotonia and uh, a failure to maintain uh, a spontaneous stress from meditation. Yeah. Mm. All right, I I don't think I have anything else. <laughs> I, I don't have anything else to add. It's a very difficult top, topic. Um, okay. Do you have anything else to teach us? I, I don't know about this topic. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank okay, you. very good job. Dr. Winton, where are you? <laughs> Dr. Winton is uh, is delivering his own baby right now. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So other uh, people will do concern to the place. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, hello. Hello, hello. Today I will present, uh, present a case about uh, group B streptococcal disease in baby. Okay. In um, my case uh, about a, a baby boy seven days old. Um, he is transferred to the hospital with uh, symptoms including a fever. He feels unwell, weight loss, poor feeding, and jaundice. About the past medical history, he is full term delivery. Uh, three kilogram at birth. Uh, he don't use any medication before and he doesn't have uh, any allergies. And uh, uh, his mother has uh, strep B vaginal swab positive. About the physical exam, um, he has normal heart sounds, has to keep near with 60 uh, times per minute. Uh, he has soft abdomen. Uh, I have uh, I hear records in both lungs of him and um, yes. And about the investigation, um, about the total total blood count, we have a high a high high blood, a white blood cell and hypertransamina. Um, we see, we see the um, pneumonia image in both lungs are uh, on X-rays, um, and the results of bl blood cultures and spinal fluids cultures. We have a uh, group B streptococcus. And, and how about the and the treatment of this baby? And we consider to use antibiotics. Uh, uh, Penicillin or ampicillin, and and now I will say about the complication and how to uh, of, of uh, streptococcal 
uh, ruby streptococcus and how to prevent uh, ruby streptococcus in babies. About the complication in children, uh, maybe uh, uh, may, maybe have a, a pneumonia, meningitis, or sepsis. And uh, how to prevent ruby streptococcus disease. Um, the two most important ways to pre uh, prevent ruby strep include testing on pregnant women uh, for group B streptococcus uh, in 30, 35 uh, to 37 uh, uh, weeks of pregnancies. And uh, we will give in antibiotics to, uh, to women who test positive for group B uh, streptococcus. And my question is uh, how different uh, in terms of spread, spreading streptococcus uh, B between C section and deliver delivered uh, by vaginal way. Thank you. That's my presentation. Thanks for listening. Uh, so, Dr. Harrison, you want to comment on this? I, I don't know much about um, the infection. Yeah, for um, uh, for uh, um, group B streptococci um, um, pregnancy, uh, like you just said, we're going to de detect the uh, patient um, by vaginal swab. The um, mother, um, we're going to treat um, in, like, if I remember correctly, because... Um, OBG was not my app as well. Um, GBS, we're going to treat uh, uh, at week 35 to week uh, prior to deliver. Um, um, the other thing is if, uh, if we detect it early, normally we don't treat until, um, until six weeks prior to the delivery. Um, that being said, um, Vaginal deliver is the, uh, the, the, um, the way of transmission to the, um, the mother to baby. So um, C-section is significantly um, decreed as the can for the baby transmission by GPS. Um, and um, at the, as you always said, the complication of GPS is pneumonia, um, meningitis, um, I'll have um, um, uh, bacteremia, thing like that, sepsis, uh, or the neonatal. Um, so, um, I hope it's, it's answering your question between C-section and, uh, and um, vaginal deliver. Thank you. I, I think Dr. Ho probably would be the best person to yeah, answer. Dr. Ho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm exactly. sorry we didn't know that. But your presentation, your your English is very good. I understand pretty much everything you said, and uh, the, the presentation is is short and concise, and uh, it's get to the point. Uh, I like how you the way you present uh, the the symptom first, the exam of the, the risk factor that the mother has a group B, the exam of the baby, and then you present the labs, and then you present the blood culture, the 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 um, lumbar puncture result and then you, you came with the with the very clear uh, treatment plan so it's, it's very uh, systematic um, but um, a good discussion but hopefully we have we have that I don't know the answer to, to that yeah. sorry yeah okay <laughs> All right, next case, please. Is Dr. Uh, Dr. Hoon is back? Yes, I'm here. I'm just listening to you guys. Oh, uh, I don't see you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Today, Hello. Uh, talk about um, which uh, 12 week gestation mother has been diagnosed with rubella infection. <laughs> It 
kiss me? Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We we can hear you. Go go for it. Uh, now the first I want to talk uh, uh, is explain about rubella. Rubella is an uh, infection caused by the rubella virus, and uh, now you uh, in the in the first twelve weeks gestation, and you diagnose it with rubella. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, it's dangerous for your developing baby, and uh, mm, it, it can uh, uh, make a miscarriage and uh, or steward. And um, it is uh, some uh, common defect with your baby. Example, um, a deafness. Cataracts uh, hurt in a defect. Uh, glaucoma brain damage. And, uh, and I, I think uh, you uh, miss divide with the, you keep or uh, terminate the pregnancy. If uh, um, because, uh, because you uh, have a uh, in the first twelve weeks gestation, uh, in uh, it uh, have high chance up to um, ninety percent with uh, some uh, defect, and uh, I um, uh, and uh, your baby have maybe have a no uh, abnormal. Uh, if you you, uh, if you want to um, non terminate the pregnancy, uh, I uh, I need to uh, get a shot of immune immunoglobulin as soon as possible, and uh, you need to uh, come back uh, come back um, every day, every week. To uh, go ahead. Uh, <coughs> my question is, um, uh, what, what time and how many time uh, uh, we we need? Uh, test uh, re -re test with a uh, uh, preg um, rubella infection in a pregnant. That's all I finished my case. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the, the answer to this. It's, I haven't seen a rubella case for like 12, 13 years. So uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. But the, the thing that we see in, at least I'm say something that I know a little bit about. So rubella patient has a higher incidence of uh, patent ductus arteriosis. Um, it, it, that's a cardiac manifestation. If they have, if the mother have rubella, the, the child has a high, high, high incidence of uh, patent ductus arteriosis. Um, I don't know if, whatever we're, the mechanism it is, but uh, that's that's the my only contribution to uh, rubella in cardiac disease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chan, do you have uh, any uh, contribution? <laughs> Well, my thing is, just like Dr. Queen, though, I train entirely in the U.S. I mean, rubella, from my experience, it's from U.S. LME, step one, step two, step three. Okay. So, and that's, well, but actually, I saw one case of rubella, rubella, actually in U.K. But um, I actually, I don't know the answer that, for that case, too. So, no, I don't know. Yeah, no, normally in, in uh, adult world, that uh, we when we saw the um, 
a pregnancy lady with the positive um, IgM or I, IgG for rubella, we, we send it to um, um, the um, uh, specialist because <laughs> we don't manage those cases as well. So they can have um, consultation for, for um, possible terminate pregnancy, something like that. But I don't have much experience on that either. Thank you. Yeah. This 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 case are perfect for Dr. Fu Fu, but he's not he left us. <laughs> or maybe maybe since we don't know much about some of these conditions, maybe we can just focus on the style of presentation, how you present the data and the format. Maybe that's what I'll pay attention to instead of the the um the detail of the uh, the mechanism of disease. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Who, who's next? Go ahead. So you do again about your uh, case of your group with another term to the You can say a little about this group. Yeah, I, uh, <coughs> because we have a five uh, group uh, with a five topic and uh, we with one group to prepare with other about the presentation from the beginning to the uh, treatment and complication. And now uh, some of people who will present, um, who will practice about the consenting <coughs> with the parent, consenting parent about the case. Okay, that, that would be. I'm sorry. Um... I'm sorry, um, uh, you say consenting or consulting? Consult. Consulting means you you asking for permission to do something. Okay. Um, only give the information for the patient. Mm. It's consulting. Cons consulting, yes. Uh, my my case is the case of about on about the VSD surgeries. The first case, the first presentation, and now yeah. I give the information for the parent. Hello, um, your child has the Down syndrome and the uh, VS VS no, uh, the ventricular septal defect. Uh, you you have a the your doctor have been tell you sir, that the heart of your babies is um, have a an a not not have a hold between two room and uh, we have been waiting for the horn to close but now uh, after six months of age your the heart of your baby the the septal cannot uh, close, and the the heart function is um, uh, not well. Uh, so we should done the surgeries for your baby. Uh, the surgeries, the purpose of the surgeries to close the the hole between two room, which called the ventricular uh, defect, and um, in the we have a, a well trained doctors and team to do the procedure however every uh, procedure on the way have uh, the um, complication and i would like to tell you about the complication before we done this procedure uh, first of all in the the pro 
the complication why we don't the surgery is um, the bleeding and um, and after the surgery the baby may have uh, to use the uh, me mechanism to help uh, the baby for breathing and she may be have uh, the risk of infection and the long term complication maybe is to have uh, the the disorder of the rhythm of the heart and she may need to use a pacemaker if uh, the heart rate is so low and um, after the surgery, uh, after he has been discharged, uh, we have uh, to follow him uh, by the ultrasound every one month, uh, the next three months, the next six months. Um, and um, now with the baby have a Down syndrome, the congenital heart disease will be more severe than uh, well, well baby with child Down syndrome. Uh, so um, our team will do our best for your babies. And uh, we hope that the baby will be um, super the surgery and can undergo the and can undergo the surgery. That's all of my presentation for the uh, parent consulting. Yes, thank you for listening. Okay, do doctor, before you stop, like, what if I don't want to have a surgery? What happened to the baby if I don't want to have the surgery? You. You seem so high risk. You said infection, mechanical ventilation, and arrhythmia, and pacemaker. What happened if we just want to delay the surgery until the baby get bigger so they can be stronger for the surgery? Yes, of course. The parents will be afraid if we tell us uh, a lot of complication. Um, uh, so I have to convince them. Uh, because of if we, we delay the surgery, we have been delayed when the babies were three, three months of age. Uh, she has been diagnosed of the congenital heart disease. Uh, and we have been waiting for the, the, the hole can be closed. But now the heart function is getting worse and worse. We cannot wait for more. Because if we waste more, the heart, your heart, fun, your baby heart function will be uh, deteriorate. Uh, will be uh, and um, she, she can get a loss of uh, pneumonia infection, and uh, she cannot weigh again, and um, uh, she she can uh, uh, live in the normal life. So it is the best time for the surgery. If we delay the surgery, um, the the sun of the heart will be inverse, and uh, we can uh, do the um, complete complete uh, complete surgery for the baby. Okay. Is it okay for the patient to uh, yeah. assess it? I, uh, I, I think so. I think for, for at least for, for me, when I do procedure, when I consent mm -hmm. the patient, mm -hmm. it's very good that you tell them the risk of the procedure. You should always do that. But you also, I usually say, what are the risks? What are the benefits? And what are the alternatives? Because if you just tell them the risk without the benefit, they just see it. Yes. So I think if, and you should address that, you know, these baby, the risk of not doing the surgery is worsening of heart function. Like you mentioned at the end, you know, uh, men, the delay mental uh, growth, uh, grow uh, delay. And then and the other risk is that if you wait too long, the heart will get too weak that these risks of the surgery will increase a lot. Um, so a couple of words is uh, for the word procedure, maybe it's a procedure, 
pro pro procedure. 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 Yeah, procedure. Yeah. Procedure. And then, uh, yeah. And then uh, I think that's that's all I have. See if, if uh, Dr. Harrison has something. Yes. Thank you. Procedure. Yeah. Procedure. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Um, I think uh, there's a cultural thing here. Um, you know, when we consenting the patient in Vietnam is a little bit different than in the U.S. In the U.S., we explain both pro and cons um, and what's the be benefit um, and what is the um, disadvantage of the, um, of the um, uh, intervention and the patient um, well aware of both ways so they can um, make their own decision or for the baby. Um, but in Vietnam, the physician tends to um, insert their objective, um, I mean, subjective opinion um, that try to convince the patient um, get into the surgery as soon as possible because the physician think it's the best for the, uh, the patient, which is okay. Um, so um, I think that's the uh, that's the difference between the U.S. Um, concept and and the um, um, Vietnamese concept. Um, and uh, another thing is after you um, you consent uh, or consult the patient, um, you should ask, "Do you have any question for me? Um, do I answer all your questions? Thing like that before you stop." Yes. And then one, one, one small thing, but uh, if you can, if you know the percentage of the, the risk, for example, the risk of a of a pacemaker is one to three percent, or the risk of uh, dying, especially for these big surgery, I you always have to tell them. At least the the CT surgeon always quote a mortality risk for all their surgery. So it, it, having the number uh, made me help them like graphs it a little bit because if you say risk of dying they think it might be 100 percent dying or 80 percent dying if you say oh you know five to ten percent dying based on based on this risk maybe it's easier for them to to grasp yes okay good job thank you all right Hello, everyone. Um, Hello. Now I will continue um, our okay, presence of um, the teacher of Fulham. Um, and as you know, the three is all, as you know, the three is the only effective treatment for theology of follow. First, after the three years of uh, theology of follow, uh, your child will uh, have a, um, a complication, have um, a wise small baby. Uh, well, after in cardiac repair, uh, long term complica complications are common. Um, such as um, um, chronic pulmonary review, review patient, um, uh, the heart band problem, or uh, how in the run uh, between the ventricle uh, that may continue to um, leak after repair. Um, um, coronary disease, artery disease, um, and so on. So uh, after surgery, uh, your child will long will need lifelong care with a cardiology training in treating parental heart, um, including routing follow-up follow appointment to make sure that uh, the initial operation um, of Rosario was successful or to monitor for any new communication. Um, maybe um, it's about one month. Or 
sometimes um, antibiotics are, are recommended during uh, dental uh, due to prevent infection. Uh, that's uh, my because <coughs> endocarditis and uh, uh, not influence in um, lining of the heart. Mm. After treatment, um, your, you uh, may have uh, some concerns about um, how best to uh, manage your joint, um, include preventing infection, um, um, a child um, uh, who has a heart disease uh, defect may um, need to take prevention antibiotics before certain return and uh, such surgical procedure. Um, exercise, exercising um, parent of um, a child may be um, limit of exercise and um, Mm. Although some children, um, adolescents, um, although may need to lim limit um, the amount of or type of exercise. Mm. About um, employment, um, um, having a congenital heart defect um, will not uh, limit your care option. Um, I have finished my presentation. Of course, you are listening. Okay, since I know a little bit about this, maybe I'll just start first. Um, so maybe, like, are you trying to consent the patient for the surgery, or you want to tell the patient about the the med the patient's uh, the, the 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 child's condition? I understand that. All right. Are you trying to ask the, the parents permission to go to surgery or you just want to talk to them about this, this disease? I only consult. Uh, to um family um oh so you want to do you want to tell them about their condition and what to expect it not ask them to go to a surgery right not consenting for a surgery right so, sorry sorry i can't understand what you say you can uh, listen that's okay are you, are you are you trying to teach the the parents about the the, the baby's uh, medical condition or are you trying to ask the the parents permission to have the baby have surgery um i try i'm trying to say with our um, patient family okay so you're trying to teach them advise them about their their condition yes. is that the, that reason okay because i was under the impression that you would ask them to uh for a consent but then later on you go into you know job expectancy and and this and, and that so for 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 me like um you did mention a lot of the the good stuff like how long does it take to recover from the surgery which is good everybody wants to know if they have a surgery they really want to know what is the normal time to 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 expect and the antibiotic prophylaxis down the line those are the good thing but i think before you 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 can they can understand this if you can explain to them better about what is the challenge of fellow so they can understand why why is it an abnormal so i would begin by saying your, your child have a congenital like a, a an abnormal congenital heart problem uh which has a two two main three two main thing is one there's a hole between the the, the 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 left and the right chamber big chamber lower chamber of the heart okay so they know that there's a there's a hole there and then the other thing is there's a there's a narrowing of blood flow from the right side of the heart to the lung so give them an idea of what it is you don't have to explain vsd 
uh, you know, narrow outflow track overriding aorta. You just mentioned those two things. And you say, okay, the way to fix it is you have to have a, a surgeon open up the chest and close the, the hole with the patch. The, so that take care of the hole. And then you have to do something to widen the narrowing so blood can go to the lung. So they can understand at least, okay, what they're going to do in the surgery. Uh, and then you can say, you know, the, the closing of the hole will allow, you know, prevent the, the, deoxygen, uh, the deoxygenated blood from coming over so they don't become blue and they can grow better. The reason you need uh, antibiotic is because you, if you close a hole with a patch, it's not your normal tissue. So bacteria can, can, can attach on it and grow very easily. So in the future, when you have a dental procedure or anything, you should have antibiotic prophylaxis. Now that's controversial whether when, how much to take or when to take antibiotic, but you can tell them why they need to take antibiotic because you have a prosthetic, uh, not a tissue in your heart that bacteria can grow onto. And then you can say about, you know, um, a lot of these surgery has been, a lot of people with these condition can live a normal life. They can work normally. They, they can do everything normally, but because you have a surgery, there's a chance that when you get older, that this, the hole can leak again. So that's why it's important that you follow up with a, a cardiologist and check the, the heart ultrasound of the heart to make sure if there's any leakage or anything so they can uh, address it early. But I think just have the patient understand, you know, not in medical term, but in gen generally why they, what, what they have, what are we fixing and why we still have to, to follow up is, but is, is important if they understand the, 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 the condition. Okay, thank you for your listening. I have your comment. Okay. Okay, keep going, guys. We're doing really well. Uh, my task uh, in um, uh, 5K is complete, but uh, I have uh, other um, case. Okay. Okay, so you want to present again, that's fine. Yes, uh, uh, let me talk about uh, cape uh, pneumonia. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you do a presentation again or just? Uh, Actually, can can you speak a little bit louder? Yes. Okay. Uh, a two-year-old boy presented in PICU with chief complaint, fever, and rapid breathing rate. He started four days with cough, runny nose, my fever. Uh, then he was given Zinas, uh, Sifurosim, today, but not get better. His uh, vaccination was complete for his age, and uh, he has no allergy. No one in family has pneumonia or tuberculosis. On physical examination, his heart rate, 128, respiration, 50, temperature 40 degree, oxygen saturation 92 percent, uh, the patient look a left, no cyanosis, intercostal muscle reduction, symmetric expansion, increased uh, primitive tunic of right chest, and um, augmentation degree breathing sound of uh, right chest and uh, head crackle. We complement uh, complementary uh, test, a uh, high white blood cell and high level of C reaction protein. Uh, a chest x ray has homorandous op uh, opacification in, uh, in the right upper um, lobe. Yeah. So in, in summary, a boy two years old has cough 
dipne, high fever, and has uh, uh, evidence of infection. Uh, a chest is dry, com uh, confi confirm right upper lower pneumonia. Uh, I don't know, I diagnosed um, low poor low poor pneumonia with uh, complication respiratory distress. I don't think about um, tuberculosis or other um, pneumopathy. Uh, so uh, I will uh, use antibiotic to treat this case, um, prosofin, uh, without 100 mg per kilogram, one, one day for five days, and um, we will re, uh, re my to respond of treatment. Uh, that's on my presentation. All right, Dr. Mindo and Dr. Nhu Do actually just arrived. So three Do, triple Do. Yeah, sorry, I'm, 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 gone, I'm gone today, so um, I may have to run away if the people went off. So uh, just say hi to everybody. Hi, <laughs> everyone. Um, um, the case you present is then is really uh, complete. I don't think that anything missing on the history, uh, vaccine maybe. Uh, vital signs in a, um, examination, um, labs and x-ray treatment, um, and then a little bit missing on the oxygen level, a little bit low. You don't know, I'm not sure what you want to do with that um, to help the kid breathe better. Uh, estimation, um, I think that everything looks fine. Uh, pronunciation a little bit, uh, you might need to just Google it and see how the pronunciation for some of that like re-estimate or homo homo homogeneous uh, or pacification, uh, something like that, you can Google and uh, practice them. It's just required practice, I think so. And slowly at first, um, that's it. Thank you. I think you are mute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I just tried to say something before I had to run away. Um, yeah, I think that um, uh, the, the presentation is pretty good, pretty complete. Um, but uh, I heard the, the later part of the previous one and this one also. There's some, uh, some term or some very common word you may uh, pay attention to the pronunciations. Yeah, just like the uh, procedure that Dr. Huyeng Do uh, suggested earlier. Um, yeah, I guess that's the, it's just the, the, the wording that maybe endurance so that we, we, we kind of uh, say the last D U R E words is um, incorrectly, but it's a uh, procedure. Uh, also, pay attention to the word like x ray, pneumonia, the, the, the accents um, in place properly. Uh, examined, um, yeah. So those, those work is quite common, but uh, yeah, sometimes we uh, don't pay attention and we may uh, pronounce this incorrectly. Uh, and if I notice something along the way, I I, I will write down and I will um, you know make a list so that you can uh, review that later on. I I just have one thing. Uh, when you exam for the, uh, the for the lung exam, maybe you said there's decreased breath sound and. But make sure you just pinpoint